Well, it started off with verbal abuse, like name calling, insulting. It went eventually to emotional abuse where he would like humiliate me. If, let's say, I picked upon something like, you know, his cell phone would ring and he would take it downstairs and talk to the person and so on. You know, he tried to make me feel like I was crazy or it didn't happen, that type of thing. So it went from verbal to emotional and then eventually escalated into physical abuse where it started out with slapping eventually to punching and being tossed across the room. So gender has to do with those ideas we associate with, the behaviors, um, the social attributes we associate with what it means to be a man, masculinity and what it means to be a woman, femininity, and how unequal relations of power arise as a consequence of, of our beliefs about masculinity and femininity. So gender-based violence then um, is usually used synonymously with violence against women because the main perpetrators of gender-based violence are men and women and young girls are the ones most at risk of being affected by gender-based violence. In the beginning stages in a relationship, uh, look out for things like somebody that constantly has to know where you are and what you're doing. Um, like you have to text them when you wake up in the morning, text them when you're about to get into the shower, text them when you come out of the shower, text them when you're about to leave home, text them once you get on the bus, once you get to work. You know, this constant um, checking up on you and then persons try to control what you wear and maybe your hairstyle. They may say to you, oh, you don't need to wear makeup. You're beautiful without makeup. Or you, you, don't, you may not need to wear this or you may not need to wear that. Like they try to control these little things. They eventually try to isolate you from your friends and from your family. This way they have even more control and therefore no one can influence you. I think we need to be definitely concerned, especially if we consider that these forms of violence are meted out against women because they are women. And that is why the term gender-based violence is used. One of the statistics that stands out is that in nine countries studied in the Caribbean, 48% of girls' first sexual encounter is either forced or 
um, coerced, which is problematic, especially if you think about the links to HIV and other STDs and the psychological effects that child sexual abuse will inevitably have. So for a girl whose first sexual encounter is forced, it puts her at a greater risk of contracting HIV. So there are a number of things that you would need to think about. So the first one I mentioned was how, because individuals are forced or coerced into having sex, it increases their risk. So if you cannot negotiate condom use, it makes it difficult for you to engage in behavior that reduces your risk of um, contracting HIV. So when we think about how an individual may, um, may be unlikely to disclose their HIV serous status for fear of being victimized, for fear of experiencing further abuse, then it tells you about how that feeds into the, um, the ways in which the virus can be, can be um, transmitted. Eventually, during the relationship, I discovered that he was cheating on me. And once I discovered that, then, as we would say, I shut up shop. And basically, that led to another issue because he was saying that I am his wife and I'm supposed to have sex with him. That's what wives do. Some of the effects that it has left me with would be trust issues. It has left me a little bit paranoid. So I look for warning signs constantly. I look for those red flags constantly. I've become more no-nonsense and my tolerance level is a bit lower than it used to be. But I think on a positive note, it has left me stronger and it has empowered me to help other women who's going through the same situation or a similar situation. Gender-based violence does not only occur in the lower economic class of society, the middle and upper class are also affected. 90% of all violent cases are women, and half of that number are women in marriages or intimate relationships. Gender-based violence can happen anywhere. It could happen in your community. It could happen in your country. It could be happening to you. Be aware and remember you should be loved, protected, and respected. I'm Simone Absalom reporting from Barbados at the Savannah Beach Hotel for CBMP. I'm from Canada. Um, I agree with it. Uh, one time, at one point, I had said something like, I don't agree with it and I don't think it's a good thing. And I, my brother, who was a lawyer, gave me a speech where he explained to me that the same views that are against same sex marriage were the same views that were used for black people being married or blacks marrying whites. So when I thought of it that way, I took a little <laughs> about face and I realized that you cannot discriminate against someone based on their gender, their race, their anything. I think if someone is in love, does it really matter who you're in love with? I think love is love. I mean, obviously, a lot of people probably would not agree to that. But I think once you find love in somebody to love you, I, I don't see, I, personally, I don't see anything wrong with it to be loved. I am very traditional in terms of things like that, so I believe marriage is a union of man and woman. Um, I would think that persons who are of the same sex and have feelings of love for one another will have a right to be together, but I would not call it marriage. So, If people want to get married, that is their right to. Uh, I know the world is built on this, this Christ, Christian foundation that says sex between, you know, uh, marriage between the same sex is wrong, but really, who are you to dictate that? If they want to get married, let them get married. They're still individuals at the end of the day. We still have to uphold human rights at the end of the day. So that's just it. If they chose to get married, it's up to them. I mean, again, I come from a very conservative culture, so but I've been exposed for many different cultures. So it's up to them. 
I wouldn't go against it. I wouldn't go yeah or anything. But if my daughter comes and tell me I want to get married with a, another woman, I'm not going to kill her or anything. I, would, I have to accept it. I don't like that because from the beginning, I was a religious person in, in the sense me not. But I grew up that way thinking that seven days my mother told me that God or Sodom and Gomorrah. I can't tell them how to live, but I want, I want, I love it in my way. I feel it right. I have many friends who have married uh, same sex. Uh, I think everyone, it's everyone's right to choose their own love life. Driving around on the public road fast is a hazard. Drinking and unprotected sex is just another example of careless and irresponsible behavior. I think it's really important for young people to try and actually be engaged in what is smart and what is right for first yourself and then others. That mutual respect needs to be nurtured. So from the surfer, love, protect and respect. Live up. Live up, shout, live up.
I just shave my entire face just uh, as a first start to um, becoming a CSW for one night. The streets of Curep in Trinidad are renowned for its barbecue, its traffic, and the island's most sought after doubles. It is also known for its street walkers, most recently referred to as CSWs or commercial sex workers. To define a CSW is a, like a bank teller. I'm giving service to a customer and receiving money in, in return. In a private location, I met up with Faith. Ah, Faith is a kind, loving individual. Um, when I'm like this, I'm very loving and nice. When I'm like the other person, it's very difficult to deal with me. I'm very moody. But once I'm as Faith, you could get along with me anytime. Faith, a local CSW, gave me a chance to experience firsthand the very streets she started in. Some of my friends invited me to go out tonight and I see how quick the money was, how fast the money was. And sometimes people don't really come. They always tend to say sex workers or CSWs is only about sex. Sometimes we need to sit down and listen to people because people have problems at home and their wife or the girlfriend wouldn't do that. And you make fast money, so that's what drew me to that. I have to tell you the truth about something. I'm very scared. Why are you scared? I'm scared because I haven't heard good things about commercial sex workers or sex workers or prostitutes or, or whores, whatever you call them. Mm -hmm. I've heard that they go out on the street, they sell their bodies, they have no morals, they have no standards, they're lower than low, they're lower than me, 
they're lower than the average citizen, they don't deserve respect, and they do it because they're uneducated and they're poor. You know, society always tend to throw our religion on us, and they always tend to condemn us about what is going on in the Bible. And for far too long, people really don't read the Bible and, and learn the Bible properly. You know, Mary Magdalene, she was a prostitute, and yet still God saved her. She was selling sex. I am a sexually driven person. I love sex. And instead of me just having sex and not getting anything for it, it's best I have sex and get money for it. They say God made us in his own image and likeness. And before I was created, God already knew what he was creating. So when people are trying to condemn you and say all kind of thing, God already know why I'm here. He put me here for a reason and a purpose, and probably this is it. Most of the sex workers that I know went to school, had their education. Some of them have a degree in different things. And most of them live like me. On the next Live Up episode, I walk the streets with one of the most interesting personalities I've ever met. Wow. <laughs> a lot of people are just passing. Are we obvious to them, you think? Of course we are. Part of living is going out and making good informed decisions. This is the most powerful defense in my mind of our generation. We have a serious problem with AIDS, we have a serious problem with a lot of things that young people are dealing with. But we have to be the one that create the social movement that change it. We have to be the change agent we're looking for. Remember, live up, love, protect, respect. Live up, shout, live up, live up, shout. Let the youth know what's going on, what youth can do, educate the youth in, in the world of today. And probably let the youth realize that, hey, we, we the youth, we the next generation, we can put a stop to this. Show them what, what they can do to help turn the world around. I think we're falling down sadly in parenting. And so they're being allowed to raise themselves, basically. And that is the major problem that we are having. They need a lot of direction, a lot of guidance. And I'm involved in teaching, so I encounter a lot of them on a daily basis. And I can definitely tell you they're in need of gu guidance, desperately. First, we've got to educate the adults first. We have to change the way adults act. If we don't change the way we as adults act, the youth won't change their ways because they respond to visual stimuli. So if the youth see you stealing, getting on bad, cussing, and you then turn and tell the youth, don't cuss, don't steal, they'll be like, but you're doing this thing here. So we gotta change the way we act first before we can influence the youth to change the way they act. I think education, really good education, is very, very important. And um, um, coming up with programs that really engage them and make them think and reflect about their own situation. That these are key, I think. We have to set a good example and we need to assist them and be there for them because it's easy to condemn them. But if you don't give them any morals or principles to go by, they're kind of lost. And you find that a lot of parents are young, so it's like children having children. So they themselves sometimes don't know. So say like in Barbados years ago where your grandparents, plus your grandmother played a real intricate role in raising kids. You don't find that nowadays because the grandparents are actually very young. So I think children need a role model. They need people that they can look up to and and, and get a guide in life. I think there should be more um, youth activity to engage more the youth, like music, it can be art, it can be anything, anything, even a beach activity like swimming. I, I happen to know a lot of Beijing couldn't swim. You know, 
any any activity which can support the youth and the young from going somewhere else so to occupy their space and mind you know anything a lot, got a lot of talent in Caribbean and we need some sort of program from people to help us because a lot of we find instead of the way some talent doing jails and robberies I know in these hard times we need saying some boy a push. A lot of talent out there, we got singers, we got actors. We think we hear Pargy. Pargy, he, he actually had the people laugh and I think. And there's more, there's more there, all about in Caribbean.